Welcome to a new morning. week and a new morning. You beautiful branches. Beautiful. Hallelujah. Beautiful branches. And we're beautiful because Christ, Christ. light shines in us. His Amen. life is in us today. Praise the, the life of the Son of God is being formed in you through the Praise Holy God. Spirit. Praise God. Hallelujah. Formed in you, formed in me, formed in us. Glory to your name in your church, Lord. We invite your presence, Lord. Lord, let us get caught up in your presence. Jesus, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that you, you sent to us when you left this earth and you went to be joined with the Father, Lord. Thank you for your holy presence. Lord God, we're not here as this song that we're going to sing, Lord. We're not here for your blessings. We're not here for anything else, but we're here for you, Jesus. We just want you. We just want you. No one else will do, Lord, today. We're caught up in your presence, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord. Touch our hearts today, Lord. Lead us, Holy Spirit, into worship. Praise you, Jesus. Take me back to where we 
You're a few in this place, mighty God. Hallelujah. Oh, happy day, branches. Do you remember the day? Hallelujah. Oh, happy day. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your teachings in Isaiah. You're teaching us, Lord God, yes, Lord. and showing us Christ in all the scriptures. Christ is in all the scriptures. Amen. And we thank you, Lord, for everyone who's joining today. Lord, just bless us all with your truth. Amen. Give us that revelation that we need, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We're back. Praise God. And Annie has a service announcement, apparently. I do. Oh. Uh, not really. What was that about my husband you were about to say? Mm, I don't remember. Short attention span there, Branches. Oh, I kind of threw my husband off on that song because I I just sang the lyrics to the, the last song. Awesome in this place. I just threw them in there. Praise God. <laughs> Change it up a bit. Hmm. It works. Praise the because Lord. It's, it's, uh, praise to Jesus. It's praising the Lord. It's offering up all worship in spirit and truth, which is what Amen. we're called to be. As, as people of the Spirit, Jesus says, uh, 
God is spirit in, in John chapter 3. They that three. worship him must worship him in and spirit. They that must worship him must worship him in spirit in truth. Amen. Amen. So, uh, we left off. We managed to get two full chapters yes. done in the last two weeks. We had left off last Friday at the end of chapter 2. And now today, we are going to pick up that, of course, logically, where would we pick up? No, Chantel, not chapter 11. We're going to start in chapter 3 because that three. comes after 2. So you're like, you're like Anne. You just want to get you just wanna get where you're going. Just like, yeah, let's go. Let's go. I don't think so, honey. I guess eh, maybe not. Anyway. Judgment on Judah and Jerusalem. Um, mine, mine says judgment on Judah and Jerusalem. Yeah, same with me. For once, and for once, our our scriptures, uh, the title for our chapter, our chapter headings are the same, pretty well the same, which is good. Um, I have the New King James, and you have the ESV, yes, English Standard Version. Okay. So, and of course, if you if you remember, and I know we we've, we've already we've had communion, we've had living stones, so you may not remember. And we've had hope, New Hope Monday. So uh, just to remind you, we left off the end of chapter two, where, where basically God is saying, uh, is, is warning Judah as he warns us, do not put your trust in man. Right. Um, some may trust in horses. Some may, some may trust, trust in, in chariots, chariots. But we will we trust, trust in, in the, the name, name of our God. Or as... And we, we pointed this, actually Chantel pointed this out last week in John, I think it's John 4, I'll find it again, um, that Jesus did not put his trust in man. And why? Because he knew what was in man. That's right. Okay. And the Holy Spirit had mm -hmm. yet to come into man. So um, right. we are to we are to be as wise as the master. And, and, and you know, when you're dealing with the world and, and I know even if it's loved ones, even if it's your family, um, that spirit of the world is, is, and that's what cuts us to the quick, especially when it's in our family, that spirit of the world, when it gets in somebody, is animosity, is, is, is um, what's Paul say? Is enmity. Enmity with God. Enmity with the God. The carnal mind is enmity with God. Which is why you have issues with your, with your friends, your family wars, your issues at work. Because they're yeah. opposed to, to the yeah. spirit of Christ that is in you, the Holy Spirit that is mm -hmm. in you. And remember, Jesus, Jesus again, had a lot of hard sayings, and he did warn us. He did warn us that this would happen to us. If And, and again, it's, it goes back to what Pastor Tim was talking about last week, counting the cost, not right. this past Monday, but the Monday before, count counting the cost. The cost. And pick up your this is one of the things money. that you have to count, is the enmity of the yes. world around you, yes. um, because you're, you're counting, you're picking up your cross and following the Lord Jesus. Yeah. And remember, Jesus, again, saying these hard things, remember how he, he warned us that the enemies, a man's enemies will be in his, his own, own household. household. That is extremely hard and harsh into our ears. But but it's happening today. Every single one of you can confirm that that's the truth. Every single yep. one of you, because you received that kind of enmity from the bosom of your own family. If they if they have not believed either and you keep praying for them. Yeah. And, and I know I've... Uh, it's, I know some of your stories and knows more of your stories for... And, and, praying for you and praying for your situations Every with day. your family, with your sons and your daughters and your brothers and sisters, your mothers and fathers, your work issues, uh, people who are your friends. I mean, we've all had that experience where, you know, we come to faith in Christ and people just, but again, Jesus said, don't worry about that when that happens. He said, blessed are you. He said in, in the, in the, um, the, Beatitudes in Matthew chapter five. Blessed are you, are you per, when you're persecuted for my sake? Yeah. Because though the so the, the prophets were were also persecuted for the sake for my sake and for the sake of God. And blessed yeah. are you. Um, we will receive those crowns in heaven to right. cast at the master's feet. And because if, if you study about the crowns, there's seven crowns. Seven crowns. You should do a study on that. Seven crowns. Yeah. 
Yeah, you should do a study on seven mm -hmm. grams. That'd I did a while back, but what? I don't think we've done it. No, we haven't done it here, but I show. did a, a personal study on the seven crowns. That's how I know there's seven crowns. Cool. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think you should mm -hmm. do it. I think you should do one of those. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be very interesting. I'd like to hear. I'm not sure I heard. No, you didn't because you said it was no. a personal study. Anyway, um, so that's where we left off. There's this, and, and that's why God warns us. Why I, through the prophet mm -hmm. Isaiah, he warned the people of Judah and Israel not to trust mm. in man, not to trust in those that have breath in their lungs because they will wind up the same way you will. They'll all go the way of all flesh. You can't trust mm. them. And that goes for us as well. And, you know, again, we've had that experience. So we're going to pick it up. God is going to continue. Remember, this is all in the context of of God as a prosecuting attorney coming before he's all, not only is he the prosecuting attorney, but he's also the judge. And he's pre presenting his case of why he's going to be bringing judgment upon mm -hmm. Israel. Mm -hmm. And of course, bringing judgment on Israel is always the same reason, the same thing. And that's because of their idolatry. Yep, all through their history and even up to today. Exactly. The, yeah. and because through their idolatry, as we said last week, they're committing, committing adultery. Committering. Committering. They're committing adultery. Which is why those two things are tied up. Divorce, adultery, and idolatry. That's why the, the, God is so uh, adamant about both those things. Because they are intimately tied up. And, and human adultery, human mm. divorce, is is this reflection of what, ha what we do to God when we fall into idolatry. When his chosen people, when his bride falls into idolatry. Amen. We know that's true of the church as well as Israel. There are a lot of people who name the name of Jesus out there, but are idolatrous, who, who, who are worshiping idols. They're not right with him. They're not right with the Lord, and they're, they're, they're yeah. preaching a false gospel. It happened in Paul's time, in Peter's time. It happens in our time. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know what they are, and you know who they are for the most part, because God shows us. And that's why the witness of the Spirit is so important. Amen. We talk about being discerning and discerning in the spirit. And John says, test every spirit to see whether they be of God. That is a very, very good piece of advice. A very good one. Wasn't it Paul that said, beware of dogs? Beware of dogs. Yeah, Chantel, beware of dogs. I am no, I'm aware of our dog. but um, So. Hey, wait a minute. Doesn't Denise have dogs too? Yeah, she has. Wow. Beware of dogs, puppy. girls. Be a puppy that's dogs. growing bigger every day. You see, we that's see her. We why. see the puppy mostly in her videos. <laughs> right. So again, back. God is presenting His case now. He has. He's, he's taken the last two chapters, um, and it's interesting because He started off bringing His case, and then as God does, remember, God is not bound by time, linear time. He doesn't have to go linear time because He stands outside of time. Right. So. When he first comes up, he, he talks about everything that he has seen. He's talked about everything that he has seen uh, with the children of, Ju of Judah, of Israel. And then he jumps into the prophetic timeline, into a future that they will never see. But we will, hopefully we will see it. But at some point we may not. But it will eventually come to pass. And he spends some time there. We talked about it. you know. And now, and near the end here in chapter 2... He's jumped back into the present. Now he's jumped back into the courtroom. And now he says, mm -hmm. and he's going to continue here in chapter three. So, Eric, let's pick it up. And verse one, take it away, sir. The book of Isaiah, chapter three. For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, takes away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stock and the store, the whole supply of bread and the whole supply of water, the mighty man and the man of war, the judge and the prophet, and the diviner and the elder, the captain of fifty and the honourable man, the counsellor and the skilful artisan, and the expert enchanter. Uh-huh. Uh, wow. Yeah, extra enchant. Oh, you only read down to three? Is that where yours is? That's where mine ends. Okay. Take it there. So... If you recall yep. from last week, God is taught, um, He's taken away Judah's leaders. He he, he, he has laid, he laid out in chapter two, uh, this the state, 
a State of the Union since your president gave one last week, a State of the yeah. Union of Israel about where they were at at that particular time. And the idea they had, they had um, a form of godliness, but did not have the power thereof in this, in, because the, the temple was still busy day and night burning, burning sheep carcasses and, and bulls and goats and bloods and flowing in blood and new moons. And they had this spiritual system going, this religious system going that mm -hmm. was doing them no good because it was empty right at the core because they had forgotten the reason why they were doing it's all these things. Rotten at the core. And, and huh. that's what happens, you know, you know, even in, in for some of us, uh, and, and maybe you, you yourself have found yourself in a situation where you, there are times when you, you feel like you're just going through the motions, that you've mm. lost that as part of what that song that Ann just sang about, mm. nothing else, it's, as part of that, it's going through the motions and forgetting the reason why you're doing these things. And uh, any, any time that this service to the Lord, your work for the Lord comes um, before and, and clouds your eyes, clouds your understanding to why, who you're working for, you know, it's, it, and, uh, yeah. who's the authority over you? I was reading in my, in, uh, in my devotionals this morning with, uh, Oswald Chambers, and he was talking about that. He said, service, he said, if you're exhausted, he said, if you feel like you're spiritually exhausted, it's because you're, you're relying, you focus everything on the work that God has you doing instead of on God himself and drawing mm -hmm. your strength from him. And knowing that when you're doing, God calls you to service and calls you to work, it's, be, it's because others will draw on the spirit of God and draw on the nurture right. and the food, that the mm -hmm. manna that you are presenting until they themselves can learn to draw it on right. themselves. And right. then other people will come and draw on And them. I think that's why after we minister, like even in worship or... You know, we minister, we feel so tired sometimes because there's that drawing yeah. that's coming out of us. You know, we're giving, giving, giving. And it's very important, you know, that we get refreshed again. And he gives us those times of refreshing, the Bible says, yeah. you know, where we just get away and we just wait in his presence and he refreshes us. I think that's in Acts chapter 4 where mm -hmm. it says he has given us the times of refreshing through Christ Jesus. Yeah. <clears throat> But it, it's also important to know that we draw our strength from the Lord and through yes. his spirit. Always, and, and always. That, um, we are if weak. we are in his Oswald Chambers mm -hmm. argument was that if we are spiritually exhausted, it's because we're focusing on the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. um, and again, At and times, that's, yeah. this is the story of Israel. They're focusing on the wrong things, mm -hmm. especially in the religion. But out of the outcrop of their, of their um, distorted, broken relationship with God, it's affected their whole life, their whole culture, their whole society. Yeah, the fact that yeah. they're getting the leaders that they deserve. And, yeah, yeah. And just um, like today, right? Yeah, huh. just like today. And you could almost see verse one says, "For behold, the Lord God of hosts is taking away Jerusalem from Judah, uh, support and supply, all support of bread, all support of water, and mighty man and soldier." Yeah. You could. You could. Put the name of your nation in there What's the plan? and 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 that's pretty well i think where we're at right now yeah yeah we are we i think we've established at least i believe i've, I've shared with you I believe, that we're in living the in leaders. the times of romans one we're in the time of judgment right now everything that's happened in the last three years is just speeding this whole thing up and the lord is taking away from america the lord is taking away from canada from new zealand from the uk from whatever nation you happen to be at in um, he's taking away support and supply. We know that God is Jehovah Jireh, the God who supplies the God who, mm. who, uh, and he supplies not only our spiritual food or our manna. He, he supplies um, the spiritual things that we need through his word, through the Bible through fellowship, through worship, through all of these things. He also, we also know that he supplies the natural because Jesus said right. in his example of, of um, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and mm -hmm. all these other things should be there. He said, don't Added worry about what you will eat and what right, you will right. wear. And, and he also says that, you know, that your soul would prosper as 
your spirit prospers. As your, as your spirit prospers, you're right. So mm -hmm. telling your spirit, the, the prosperity of your spirit should come before the prosperity of your body. The one will come, the, the, the one will come naturally. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, I'm glad Anne said yeah. that, because what we're talking about here is when it's the other way around. Mm -hmm. Remember how I told you that Judah yeah. is very prosperous at this time, just as we are? When it comes the other way, when that first comes, it's your spirit that will not prosper. Your spirit has to prosper first before your body can prosper the yes. right way. Amen. Um, now I forgot what I was going to say. Oh. Nice going, honey. <laughs> nice going. Um, and so God is, God is now telling him in the midst of their prosperity because. Praise God. They, because they've got it backwards, and it's just an example of their this, again, twisted relationship, this broken relationship we may have with God. Again, God is now going to tell you, or is going to, I'm going to say, because there's um, a famine on the land of the Word of God, as he said, he says elsewhere. He, um, there's that famine of the knowledge of God in the land. Um, there now will become a, a real famine. There will now become real lack. Uh, and that's what we say. God, and God is going to do it. He's going to be one. That, he's going to be the one that's going to take. Uh, he said, I'll support a bread. I'll support a water. He said, so he says he's going to take that away. So there will become famine in the land. That, yeah, and uh, yeah. I, I mentioned it, I, I think, when we were talking about, hmm. uh, I think it was the parables that followed well, early last year I remember us talking about how um, that one of the the number one weapon that God uses in judgment against his people is fam and pestilence and pestilence well actually so I, I you're pestilence right I think there was four but pestilence pestilence famine war and natural disaster. Natural disaster. And I think that's what, and, and Jesus is the one who mentioned at the Olivet Discourse that you'll hear about wars and rumors of wars. There will be famine and pestilence and earthquakes in various places. But these are just the growing pain because they've always been there. It's all part of God's judgment. So, and now he's saying, you know, because, because you're pros because you're sh so short-sighted about the, about the, uh, the source of your prosperity, the source of your blessing, and because you know you you your sins, as as we shall see when we get to Isaiah fifty nine, your sins have separated you from me, because I can't look upon sin, so I can't look upon you. All these things yeah. are about to happen to you, and this happens over and over and over again in the Bible, as it does throughout history. So now, yeah. oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. Tell them. Well, you know what I I noticed here that it's. Oh, the, it's all organized around like warriors because look what it says: judge, we're prophet, just going to get there. Diviner, elder, we're just going to get there. Captain of fifty, honorable men, counselor, skillful artisan, the expert enchanter. Like they're all okay. So higher now up. he's 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 not only going to bring a famine, but he is also going to bring political chaos stuff, into yeah. the nation. There's there's going to be a lack of leadership. Yep. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Confusion in the camp, right? Lack of leadership. Mm -hmm. I have, I've had this conversation with a number of people, and I'm sure you all agree that there is a distinct lack of leadership of in course. the world today, particularly in America, particularly in our nation. And I think that, that Wendy and Eric could probably say the same thing. Um, Unique and Chosen could probably say the same thing about the UK. And, and anybody who is a discerning child of God will will know that there is a shocking lack of leadership in the world. Sure there is. In political yeah. leadership I'm talking about. I mean, mm -hmm. bad enough in the, in the church, depending on what church you're talking about, what denominations you're talking about, but that there seems to be a distinct lack. We seem to be, uh -huh. what the Bible says, flocks, sheep without shepherds. I think that's done on purpose, though. Well, it is. It's part because, of the judgment of God. That's what we're seeing here. Yeah, this is because, part of the judgment of um, God. Someone very soon is going to be stepping in to bring what seems to be like order. Mm -hmm. He's going to take control over everything. 
We know who that is. The second coming of Donald Trump? No. I mean, as far as this world Heaven goes. Heaven forbid. As far as this world goes, is the Antichrist. Huh. He's going to step on the scene and say, okay, away with y'all. I'm in charge. But again, <laughs> and, you know, if you if if any of you read or, or watched those, the, the um, Left Behind series, you know that a dispensationalist will argue that the rise of the Antichrist it is because of the vacuum of political uh, leadership in the world in the face of this catastrophic event called the rapture. Mm -mm. Don't believe in the rapture. So, I mean, they're just <laughs> using that as this is why there's this lack of leadership. But there's a lack of leadership in the world already before oh, yeah, any definitely. of this happens. Definitely. Definitely. Okay. And, and so, it's all leading up to that. But here's an instance where, and there's a lack of leadership, like Anne says, on purpose. God God has, you know, we don't, we don't have the leaders that we used to have. People are not attracted to government like the, the what they used to say, the best and uh, the good and best of us who, who are attracted to uh, public service. Um, it's not so much... It, now it seems to be the revenge of the nerds. Mm. Um, and again, but here's and here's here's God speaking these same things. He he says, because you know everything is is going on peachy keen in your eyes. He said, I'm, I'm not only I'm not only going to bring famine and destroy your your flesh inspired prosperity, but I am also going to leave you leaderless. Yeah. And I'm going to leave you leaderless because. You will no longer have mighty man and soldier, a judge and a prophet. What does that mm -hmm. mean? That means that's almost a reflection of that that if you trust in your army, some may trust in horses, some may trust yeah. in chariots, but we will trust in the name of our God. Those nations, yeah. and I know Israel, and and very many, even Israel today, but m most of us, uh, you know, in history, nations have have, for the most part, dependent upon their armed forces, their army, for the most part. Um, and uh, skilled men to lead those armies in battle. He said, God is saying, I'm going to, I'm not going to give you any kind of military leadership, and your, your army is going to be pretty well used. It's, it's like, I'm going to cut the head off your oh, army. Yeah. So if you're, if, if you're dependent on your army to defend you, Jerusalem, Judah, Israel, Samaria, if you're depending on your army to do it, you think that I'm going to raise a Gideon or a Barak? Do you think I'm going to raise a David, a mighty warrior Definitely. to send you? No, I'm not going to do that. You're going to have nobody. The mighty man and the soldiers, the skilled soldiers will disappear. Mm -hmm. So your national defense, your national defense will be brought down. He said, the judge and the prophet yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Now, the judge, injustice. how often do There'll we see... There'll be a lot of injustice in the land. How often do we no, see God is. crying <laughs> out against mm -hmm. Israel's... Um, judges. Judges, and about their lack of, of them... False prophets. Of, of them uh, practicing justice in the that's land, right. especially uh -huh. justice to those that need it most, the most downtrodden, um, downtrodden in society. Again, represented by widows and orphans. And and not just here in Isaiah, we see it all over the prophetic, the prophetic uh, yeah. scriptures, um, of of how God is saying, you know, they're relying on you, they're relying on you to give them justice, uh, because there are people out there that take advantage of them. There are people out there that steal them blind, steal from them blind, and they cannot defend themselves. You are to defend them. You right. are their defense. I put you in those positions to defend. Them. But those judges are not there anymore. Yep. Not that they, they were there. Corrupt. Not that they were there a lot to begin with, anyway. But uh, you know, those. Uh, he said, "You will have no judges. These guys will be all corrupt." Like Ann said, they'll take bribes. They'll, yep. you know, they won't seek me. And the interesting thing, he ties us with a prophet. Mm -hmm. So not only is the civil law not going to be upheld by the judges so that's going to bring more chaos more crime into the streets more more of a, a, a dislocation of society a disruption of society but not only that i'm not sending any more prophets 
so that mm -hmm. when you see these things happening, you're being invaded and by foreign powers because your army is useless because you have no one to lead it. You you can't there there's crime there's there's all these things happening in the street disorder in your land. Yep. And you're going to cry to me, Lord, Lord, what's going on? What's going on? I'm not going to send you a prophet to tell you what's going on. You're not going to get it. This is this is a prophetic warning I'm giving well, you through this man, mm -hmm. Isaiah. But if you don't listen to him and you don't listen to Jeremiah and you don't listen to Ezekiel, you don't listen to any of them, then you will not hear my voice. Their trust in div divination, uh, the witchcraft, and you know the idolatry has caused them to put their trust in diviners and enchanters who lie. Magic. These lying spirits, you know, that they've believed, which has caused their downfall. The deception, you know, in the land, and of course the, the worship, of, the worship of idols in that in Canaan, in that land, and in the Near East, a lot of it has to do with the practice of magic, sure. magicians and necromancers. Yeah. We even see that in the Law of Moses, and it's happening out. And and we're going to see this, we're going to see this later on in this chapter because I read ahead when she, when God starts talking about the women yeah. of Judah and what they're doing, and most particularly what they're wearing mm -hmm. and how these are not this isn't godly apparel this isn't godly trinkets they're no, wearing these no, are all no. magical amulets That's right and we'll we'll get to that when, yeah. sometime probably tomorrow hopefully tomorrow but again, <laughs> like <Maybe>. i said <laughs> the diviners and the elder they're all mm -hmm. going to be gone and again here's more the captain of the 50 and the man of rank again here's more of the I'm, you're not going to have a national defense. And the counselor, there's going to be no sound counsel. There'll be no sound counselor. No. And if you want to know the importance of counseling, especially in this, re remember we, we mentioned this too, Ahithophel. I don't know if yeah. you remember him, but Ahithophel, when a Absalom rebelled against King David, Ahithophel right. remained loyal to David and he was going to follow David, but, he, but David told him to stay with his son Hmm. And give him false counsel right. to lead him. And he's the one that said to Absalom, when Absalom says, what should I do? And Hithophel said, you need to go into your father's concubines, father's concubines and show everybody that you're now the master. You're now the king here. You have the authority. Um, and again, we also know that very famous passage in the um, I'll, I'll find it. It's probably in Proverbs. There's safety yeah. in a multitude of counselors. Mm -hmm. uh, both in the political level, the military level, and the religious level. Um, all of these will be yeah, gone. Chantel and I were just talking about that safety yeah. in a multitude of counselors. All of these will be gone. Um, and it's interesting that these counselors that they're talking about here um, is, is kind of lumped in with the skillful mu magician and the expert in charms. Again, this tells, it, tells us that the culture at that time was just filled with, I mean, you probably go in the marketplace and not just buy vegetables, but you could buy all sorts of charms and amulets and spells um, from stalls that were right there in, in, in the market in downtown Jerusalem. It's Proverbs eleven fourteen. Proverbs eleven fourteen. You'll probably put that up. I would probably be, and I, and I will, mm -hmm. as I always usually do. Um, Proverbs eleven fourteen. there's safety in a multitude of wives. No, <laughs> I just got that. A multitude of counselors, not wives. I'm so, so glad people don't do that today. <sighs> well, some do, but. So I take it you and you and the rest of the branches are are dead set against it, bringing back concubines. No comment. When's dinner? Oh wait, you're not getting any. Oh. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> no, branches were not bringing back concubines. But again, they were a big thing back then. Mm. Um, uh, and so let's read um, Verse four. verses four to four and five, I guess. Say. Is that where you have your division yep. too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I will give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. The people will be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbour. The child will be insolent toward the elder, and the base toward the honourable. Do we not see this today? Yeah, so we'll get to that, but let's start at the bat. Let's Praise the God. They saw it then, we saw it now. They're, they're seeing Hallelujah. it now. So, I will make boys their princes and infants mm. shall rule over them. Boys. If you've studied any kind of European history, mm. and you've discovered, discovered, just studied the history of uh, royal families, the history of kings and queens, you know that in, particularly in the, the history of countries like England and France and Germany during the Middle Ages when kings and queens flourished and ruled and where most of our ancestors came from, that there was a saying there that, that a nation was cursed when a child sat on the throne. Because they're inexperienced and incompetent. Not inexperienced, but their counselors and the and the huh. barons and the nobles would that was their attempt to they could take over sure. literally take over the royal administration, and the end there was a danger that the, until the child came of age, uh, they would have the authority and they could do pretty well what they wanted with that royal authority and and so much here now too, the king which they asked for remember they wanted a king like other nations back in Samuel's day, which is why they got Saul. So we want to be like other nations. We want to be kings. And of course, Samuel was very angry with that. But God said, mm -hmm. don't be angry with, uh, don't be angry with uh, them be, for my sake, uh, Samuel, because uh, they're, they, had, they haven't rejected you. So they've rejected right. me from right. being king. That's right. Said and even now in this in the the time of, and we're in the time the the time of royalty here in Israel mm -hmm. ruled by kings, um, and we saw the list of kings that Isaiah would be prophesying to it at the beginning of chapter one. But because of that, um, <clears throat> it was always if the stability of a kingdom was always based on whether a mature individual was sitting on that throne. And I don't mean mature emotionally or, or mentally, because that certainly there have been times when very, very bad kings mm -hmm. um, who were not fit to rule. Yet, because they were adults, people respected the throne, respected yeah. the, the person. of them. They may not have respected the, the king personally, but they respected the office. Um, and I know that's the same. We, we probably see the same thing about the line of the presidents of the United States. You've had some. Good presidents and powerful presidents. You yeah, but they've some, made a mockery of the office. You've had some very weak presidents. <laughs> um, the office of the president is very much like a royal office at times, the way it operates. Um, <clears throat> but again, this is a curse. This is not, you know, you know I, and it's, it's, it's opposite of the blessing here. He said, I will make boys or princes and infants shall rule over them. You remember, and it's in the Psalms. Um, where God's talking about the ultimate peace of the Messiah when he comes. I'll, yes. I'll look this. I'll put this up for you. Where he comes. And what does he say? He said, the lion shall lay down with the lamb. Amen. And who will lead them? A child. A child will lead them. Mm -hmm. You know. Now, again, that can refer to the Lord Jesus Christ for sure. But in this case, in God's economy, a child is is perfect because we're called to have the faith of a child. Right. We're not. We're not called. The, the world is always opposite to what God wants it to be. Um, we're not to have the faith of adults. That's that's you know it's great that we do. We're adults, but we're to, we're to have the faith of a child. A child will lead them. Amen. But in this case, in in a, in Judah's time, uh, in a, in a secular kingdom, it is a curse, not a blessing. For a child to lead them. And again, it's just a symbol of the political weakness that God is about to bring upon them because of their idolatry, because they've turned their backs on God. Mm -hmm. And any nation that turns their back on God will suffer the ultimate penalty. And that nation will fall. The judgment, yeah. That nation will fall. Mm -hmm. And this is what Anne was talking about. And people will oppress one another, every one of his fellow and everyone in his neighbor, yep. talking about judges. It, 
and talking about well that kind of describes the state of anarchy well of course and this is this is what we're saying the lack the lack of anarchy. judges and the lack of justice in the mm-hmm. land again and and mentioned this last week and we talked about um Judges 21, 24, the very last verse in the book of Judges. And mm-hmm. every man did what was, what right, was right according to his eyes. And why was that? Because there was no civil authority. There was no king. There was there was no one to enforce the laws of the land. So people were not protected. Them, yeah. no there were no judges. Of... That the, Not the kind of judges in the book of Judges. You know, you know civil judges. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so people were allowed to freely oppress their neighbor. And, of course, you know sin if if you know that you aren't uh, you aren't going to be arrested and you aren't going to be charged and you aren't you're not going to be tried for anything you do because of the weakness of uh, in the country that you live in because of the laws are so anything lax goes. because they're enforced your sin will allow you to, to take advantage and there's a lot of fear in that there's a lot of fear in that 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 there's a lot of fear in that <laughs> And of course, honey, you want to say something about this last thing? The youth will be insolent to the elder and the despised oh, yes. to the honorable. Oh, yes. We see that today for sure. Children rising up against the elders, they're forgotten. I mean, even in the church, to a degree, there's a separation between the elders, the generational gap there. And they're not being taught to respect their elders. Mm-mm. You know, they're just washed up put to the side, you know, and, and not useful. Nope. And plus we're seeing, are we not seeing rebellion in they're the insolent, family now? They're insolent, yeah, rebellious, The youth will be insolent to the elder. They're entitled, you know. You know, and we see this all the time. We, mm-hmm. we do not see this respect, the, the honoring of the mother and the father. We Neither do we see, you know, with, there was a horrible case here last month not here in mm. our town, but in Toronto, there was a horrible case where a group of eight girls, eight girls, that between the ages of 13 and 16, swarmed a guy outside, uh, an older, an older man. He was, he was homeless, swarmed him outside a subway and they killed him. They knifed him and killed him. This is what this is talking about. This is how far we've degenerated. You could, could have been an uh, initiation too. Apparently, well, I'm not going to go into yeah, details, but again, yeah. this is a reflection of what was going yep. on in Israel is going on in our times. But I think because the parents are not living the example. They probably aren't. And passing, it's it's from generation to generation to generation. Right? I don't think it's the parents though. I, it, it just... I don't think it's degenerates and degenerates. If it there's no leadership be. in the home and no godly, in some case, godliness in the home, I, that's true. And in the nation, right? And it affects true. the whole nation. It affects the whole town, a city. But I don't think I don't think it's. I think the majority of parents are not. I think the majority of parents are fighting the school boards. It's the school boards. That yeah, are, they may be fighting it, but at the same time, are they living right in their own homes? Well, they might not be. But uh, setting they're examples certain, for they're their trying kids. to protect their children. Mm-hmm. from the civil authority. Mm-hmm. Um, I was having this discussion with my son about how the school boards in the last 10, 15 years seem to have, whenever there's a municipal election, they seem to have gotten a lot of power into their hands, more yeah. than the city councilors yeah. themselves. Mm-hmm. It's school boards that are the ones that are making all these woke decisions for mm-hmm. our children. And 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 the the municipal government has no say in what is going on um well i'm just making that comment concerned with uh, the child will be insolent toward the elder you know and base toward the honorable toward their elders toward the older people their parents the you know oh yeah as we just said that yeah yeah and we're seeing that today. And, and you may have even experienced it yourself with your own children. they're not children. being taught. And they're not. And, and Anne's, she, she's right. If they were, 
Well, and even then, even in a godly household where, where children are taught properly, this is what God expects you of it. Children, you know, obey your, obey your parents. And all. that's not what they're taught when they go to school. Nope. And so some of you parents, I know some of you parents, as a parents, you have young kids, you have to make that and you're decision. you're homeschooling. Huh? You, you, you make that decision, you're either going to homeschool, because that's the only way you can keep them away from this pernicious yeah. influence on them, or... Christian schooling. Or Christian schooling, which is too expensive for most people, because it's And even then, you know. Even then. It, but it's got to be... It's better than any... It, it nothing, has but. to be demonstrated in the home consistently but again how often do you hear children that were grew up in the church and they have godly parents and they grew up in the church mm -hmm. and they go off to university yeah. and what happens well there's no guarantee i mean there's each no man guarantee. makes their choice but you're to, where it's to a good start up. it's a good place to start right? no it's where we need to start because yeah. we're told to bring our children up in the admonition mm -hmm. of the lord and when they are older they will not depart from it the whole idea being they may they may fall away and they may be prodigals for a certain amount of time but those seeds are planted in them the parents i know you and i have planted seeds in our kids and we're just waiting for them to come to fruition that god would you know someone come to water them and create oh, yeah. a harvest for the lord you know? and, and and you're right it's it's very important that they be bring up this but there's no guarantee that this one won't happen because the, the the influence of school, the influence of their peers, and the influence of society. And, of course, cultural norms are being reinforced through the Internet, through Facebook and through Twitter and all these other things where their kids, you know, can socialize on the Internet and share all these things. It, it makes a parent's job even harder today. I'm glad I'm not a parent today be very difficult oh you mean of young kids because we are still parents but well we're still parents <laughs> but you know what i mean when you know we're not great still bringing them right, up right. um well but anyway that's a stat that that's we'll end there but um for today mm. but this this is where israel's at and and of course these 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 chapters these this particularly the last one and this one is so germane to where we are today in our society. All these things mm. that God is pointing out, all of God is these indictment that God is bringing against is uh, the society of Israel, the culture of Israel. All the every single one of them can be pointed to us. God can say the same, and He is, and that's why I believe we are in this time of judgment. Romans one judgment. Um. He will eventually be bringing judgment upon Jerusalem, as we shall see, and upon Judah, and upon Israel. And right he is bringing judgment upon church, us. I think. Well, judgment, judgment begins, begins in the house yeah. of the Lord, yeah. as Peter said. He's dealing with his people. Heavenly yeah. Father, we give you thanks, Lord, for this time together looking into your word. Father, we thank you for all the mm -hmm. amazing and and sometimes so difficult things that you're sharing with us here in these pages of Isaiah, Lord God. Things that we need to be aware of in our own time, Lord God. It's almost as if you're speaking to us in a nightly news broadcast, Father. This is this is what's happening in society, and we know, we see it, we can see it around us, Lord. And Father, we know how it must break your heart at times to see these things. But Father, we are thankful, Lord, that while we were yet sinners in the whole world while we were yet sinners christ died for us lord god and we thank you that you have revealed that wonderful truth to us lord and that we have received and accepted and we call ourselves your children the children of god and lord you have sealed us for that time lord you have sealed us and protected us by the holy spirit lord god and father i i pray for each and all the dear branches lord god who who tune in every day lord god and who desire father to be fed from your table lord who desire to look into the pages of the scriptures to see whether these things be so lord i thank you for their loving hearts their willing hearts their gracious hearts lord i thank you that they know you and again as always i pray for your provision and your protection upon them and their families lord god father i pray that in those times that you will hide them in christ lord you will keep them, Father, from the dwells of the enemy, Lord. And you will yes, also Lord. give them and fill them by the Holy Thank Spirit, you. Lord, that they may see the approach 
of the devil, and that so that they may stand and resist him, and he must flee. He and his works that were all, have already been destroyed by the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, Lord, again for this day that you have made, and this is the day that we, we will rejoice in it, Lord God. And we will rejoice and to be able to begin the day every day looking into your word, Lord God. It gives us hope. It gives us peace. It gives us such confidence for the future and the things that we need to do, Lord. And it also gives us the strength we need, Lord, to go through the day because the Lord Jesus said, let the day's troubles be sufficient for the day. Yes. And Lord, we know that you are with us day after day after day. You, Your Lord. spirit is always there, Lord God. And we thank you, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that you are God and that there is no name under heaven in which men may be saved except that of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord, that we know you and we know each other, Father. We thank you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thanks for joining us tonight, Branches. And um, Tonight? I, or tonight, this morning. Tonight. It's not tonight. It's morning. This is this morning. <laughs> I, well, the reason I said tonight oh, you're is... thinking of tonight. I'm thinking about tonight because I'm obviously not getting dinner tonight. So if any of you would like to, to send me, you know, some dinner or some money or something that I might You would actually eat it. It would take like weeks. Well, it won't get here by tonight. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> then you're out of luck. I guess I'm out of luck. I guess I'm going to be eating cold beans, and I hate beans. <laughs> Have a blessed day. Branches, my love you. Have a very blessed day, and we shall see you, see you tomorrow, a. where we shall. Is there a round table this week? Could be, if everybody wants one. Yeah, I thought we were going to have one every two weeks. Well, let's see what the public acclaim is. Let's see if what everybody would like. Uh, if you'd like a roundtable, put it in chat, put it in the Discord. And if you have an idea, if you have a subject you guys want to talk about, let's do a roundtable on Friday. Friday. But only if Ann feeds me tonight. If you want to get up early enough. Huh. Um, I get up early. Bye-bye. Bye. Till, till tomorrow, branches. Bye.